Hello YouTube, and welcome to a new series on King's Raid by me, the Movie Human. Now, first of all, I want to start out by giving a shout out to QX Games and Mogadi YouTube, both of whom were very big inspirations to me as I started out here in game and learned to become a more knowledgeable player. And now I want to take what I've learned and I want to pay that forward. But what I noticed that neither of them really seemed to do was give a real good beginner's approach to the game. It always seemed like they were focusing either on a surplus of information or in Mogadi's case it felt like it was more focused on just what he was doing and how he was doing things. So my series I'm hoping is going to be just a teeny bit different in that we're going to go through this from the beginning as if we're all just brand new players. I even went through the trouble of creating a new account that we'll be using for the purpose of this. So when you start out in game, you're going to arrive in Orville, which is the headquarters for your characters and is going to be the main hub here in King's Raid. It includes such places as the Heroes Inn, which allows you to recruit characters to your cause. The Forge, which allows you to upgrade your armor and the uh, stat rolls on said armor. The Event tab, that will allow you to do anything from gaining specific event items to farming for rare items such as magical dust, as well as gold and even occasionally mysterious fragments, which are used to transcend the level of your characters or for those of you who aren't familiar with that terminology that is how you limit break characters in this game now starting out you're going to get 15 days worth of special rewards the first day that you start out you're going to get a three star magic hero who is very decent when starting out and if you uh, devote equipment to her if you focus on her and you raise her up well she can be a very good character for you later on in game now this 15 day beginner benefits collection is phenomenal because it not only gives you the opportunity of pulling a 5 star hero at the end of it but it also gives you a three star hero with Marianne, and then it gives you another five star hero with Celine. And you'll even get her and Marianne's unique weapons, which are weapons that are specifically designed just for them and will increase their attack far more than any other attack items in game. That is a huge benefit to have when you're first starting out. That's going to increase your damage, it's going to increase your survivability. All around, it's just a good thing. You're also going to get T6 level gear. Which normally, you would have to run Dragon Raids in order to get that. You're going to get a costume ticket. You're going to get essences. You're going to get Stones of Infinity to level up your characters even more. And this is just 15 days worth of stuff. You also get the daily stuff, where you get 50 rubies every day. You can buy a 2-star hero ticket and a 2-star hero costume ticket for super cheap. You get level up missions every time you reach a certain level. Every time you clear a chapter, you get rewards. Like, it's just... This game is very generous for beginners. And this is all just the beginner like special items this doesn't include the achievements you're going to be getting for clearing each level and each stage for uh, raising up your heroes to a certain level like in a way King's Raid is kind of like baby's first uh, mobile game because they literally reward you for everything that you do in it but so starting out, you're going to have Castle, Frey, Klaus, 
Roy, and Cleo. So Cleo is an AoE or area of effect character. Roy is single target DPS as is Castle. Klaus is a tank who is going to be defending your team. And then Frey is of course your cleric who is going to be healing your team. I believe they're called priests in this game, but, you know, whatever. Then, of course, you're also going to be given Mirian from the Beginner Collection that we just talked about. I bought Rodina with a three-star hero ticket that I was given from uh, completing a certain stage of a chapter. And then I actually bought Rena with my two-star hero ticket. And I've raised her up quite a bit because on my other account, I know that Reina does really well. Both in physical teams and in like big boss scenarios once you raise her up to a certain level. And I'm curious about how Castle Frank and Klaus will work since I completely neglected them last time around. But they've gotten super buffed since I first started out. So how do you make your characters stronger? Well, if you just run through the basic story campaign and you take advantage of the, uh, you're going to get T4 Ancient Gear tickets. What you're going to want to do at that point is you're going to want to take those gear tickets and you'll cash them in and place the items on your damage dealing character. If you have any extra tickets of that kind, then I would recommend spending that to give your tank something. Because that would be a good way to increase its survivability, which is going to help you stay alive in the long run. You're also by this time going to have a lot of fragments. I have transcended Reyna up to T1, or Transcendence 1 already, and as you can see I barely put a dent in my fragment amount, but that's because I'm being really selective on who I'm raising this time around, how high I'm raising them before I do another series of missions, like I'm being super careful this time. Now there are three things that you're going to need to keep track of for your character. You're going to need to keep track of their gear. You're going to need to keep track of their skills. And you're going to need to keep track of their transcendence level. Now the transcendence isn't going to come into play until they're at least five stars. So if you don't have your characters to five stars yet, don't worry about that quite yet. But it is going to become super helpful when you reach that level. Transcendence perks tend to give additional stats that help increase your hero's effectiveness. Another thing to note is that you are going to be given Castle's unique weapon for free via the story campaign. And you will be given a unique weapon ticket that I would recommend using for Klaus's unique weapon. If you don't use it for Klaus's unique weapon, then I would very much recommend going and grabbing Freya's. Or, <laughs> Freya's. Freya's. Because her unique weapon is going to help increase her healing. Which is definitely not a bad thing to have when you're starting out. If you want to go a different route and you want to go with Roy as your main DPS, then I would recommend grabbing his unique weapon because he is definitely good when it comes to single target damage. But I have chosen Reyna. I used a unique weapon ticket to get her unique weapon. I am set for now. Another thing you're going to need to keep track of is your runes. When it comes to runes, you have three slots on unique weapons, but you only get 
one slot on regular gear. So do keep that in mind. When it comes to your DPS character, I would recommend going full offensive. Just throw attack slots in there. You can always throw other runes into the other gear for like P block and accuracy or crit damage or whatever. But for now, I'm focusing on getting Raina's damage up as much as I can. Now, when you want to raise the level cap for a character, what you're going to have to do is go to the Room of Ordeals. In order to do that, you can simply select a character, hit the Awaken button. If you have enough materials, which I do, even though this is going to hurt me to spend, well, maybe not Castle. Let's... Let's start on free. It's not bad to increase the power of your healer. Alright. So we'll go to Frey's dungeon. Grab my boo. So the game does have the option for autoplay. Which will simply mean that the computer will cycle through the skills of your characters. This is perfectly acceptable for early game when you don't really have an idea of what the skills do or... The sense of timing and whatnot. And it does help make farming a little bit more manageable since you don't have to sit there and manual every single match. But with that being said, you're also going to need to keep in mind that when you get to true end game and even mid game, you're going to start experiencing moments where you're going to need to manual your skills in order to clear content. Because the auto skills can and often do get you killed. So now that we've awakened Frey, her costume has changed, her stats will have increased, and overall she's going to be more effective in battle for us for now on. And our team level even went up from that. So we'll get another achievement for raising phrase level. Now as you can see, I am currently on chapter 4. I'm on my way to chapter 5. But I managed to clear chapter 4 simply by grabbing Reyna Castle and Klaus's unique weapons. I equipped them all with tier 4 gear. Between purple and red would be the optimum choices. But if you have a couple blue pieces there, that's okay. Nobody can shame you for that. You're just starting out. Don't worry. So now... I think I'll raise Klaus's level to T or to five. And this is actually the order that I would recommend doing this in, like team-wise. You'll want to start up your DPS first, then do your healer, then your tank. Castle, in this instance, is more of a sub-DPS in my eyes, and so he's not getting as much attention right now because I'm still debating on whether I'm going to replace him with a different hero. Because a new hero only costs 6,000 gems in the special shop and by the time you've cleared chapter 4 you're going to have 8,000 rubies as you saw that I do. And this account's only five days old, so I've only gotten five of the beginning collections things, and even that gave me some rubies. Clearing chapter one also gave rubies. Uh, awakening a hero each time gives you rubies. So, as a beginner, there's a lot of places where you can get this in-game currency, and I would recommend stocking it up 
until you have a really good reason to spend for it. Now, if you find a hero that's in the, uh, that's in the shop that you really want, and you just can't help yourself, then you go ahead and buy that character. I'm kind of feeling that way about, uh, Rahartna here, since she is a brand new hero. I'm super curious about how her skills work, but I'm holding off on that for right now. Because I am still checking on something. I'm thinking that once I clear chapter 6, I'll decide on whether I want to invest in another hero or not. So in the meantime... Don't worry too much about the things on the adventure board at first. If you want to run through these each day, run through as high as you can get or whatever, then that's definitely an option. It's not bad to farm gold in the ancient royal vault. It's not bad to farm skill books in the stockade. You can farm artifact pieces and whatnot in the Tower of Challenge. But I wouldn't focus on that until you've unlocked all of these different areas. Because then you can just farm through them every day continuously until they're all done. Plus, until you unlock at least chapter 6 worth of conquest and upper dungeon, I don't really feel it's worth to do. Because then you have to keep stopping and starting and that just annoys me. So, that's a real quick video. I just wanted to go over those basic things for now. In the next video, I'm going to go more deeply into gearing. And how you should gear yourself through your first 15 days of King's Raid. For now, if you like the video, go ahead and like it down below. Leave me a comment letting me know how I did. And subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss the next video when it pops up. And until then guys, happy raiding and welcome to King's Raid.